Amen. We are continuing with our sermon series with going future forward. We've been talking all month long about future forward. We talked about looking future forward. We talked about thinking future forward. We talked about uh, working future forward. Uh, we talked about moving future forward. And today we're going to talk about future forward expectations. Future forward expectations. Turn with me, if you will. I'm going to use two passages of scripture today, both coming out of the New Revised Standard Version. And I use that version because that is one of the more scholarly versions that uh, scholars have found to be a little bit more closely written to reflect what the ancient text actually said. Okay? So, just, just so you know. Amen. So, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and then we'll flip to Philippians chapter 3. Verse 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, and then Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. There you'll find these words in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. Flip over to Philippians 3.14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call. Some may say the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I want to talk to you again from the subject matter, future forward expectations. I've come to learn, Brittany Rose, that expectations are realized when we learn to put our trust and hope in the abilities of the right one. The reality is, though, however, most of our expectations begin to get doused because we believe God for the moment, but we don't believe God for the eternal. Uh, we believe God that he'll do what he said he'll do as long as it's something that we want him to do that we can see. We believe God to give us the car when our credit is bad. We're expecting that we believe God to help us pay our rent when our rent is uh, on the fritz. We, we, we believe God and we have expectation for God to handle the everyday mundane things of life that oftentimes we are too lazy or uh, we just are not in the right the right place or the right frame of mind to handle on our own and we're not doing what is necessary to get things done we believe God and we're expecting God to handle things that are dealing with our day-to-day -day living but I've come to encourage you my beloved brothers and sisters as we have been talking over these last five weeks we have been talking about making sure that we start positioning ourselves we start doing things that are going to work and deal with reality that is going beyond where we are right now talk boy I'm gonna preach it till I'm through I want you to understand that if your expectations are really going to be future forward I want you to know what that looks like and what that requires on your end because many of us we have expectation for now but we really don't have expectation for later what are you saying we believe God is going to do it now while we're in the midst of the saints while we're in the sanctuary but when we leave the sanctuary and the windows are closed and the doors 
doors are locked. The organ is turned off. There's nobody on the drums. The choir has gone home. The Sunday school is let out. When we get by ourselves, the very thing or the very things we were expecting God to do, we cease to believe he's able. Truth is that many believers are walking and running into problems because their expectations are only based on what they can see. Their expectations are only based on what they can comprehend. And I've come to give you an urgent let out, and I ain't going to be long today, but I've come to give you an urgent let out, and I've come to give you this reminder as the Apostle Paul was talking in Ephesians, Apostle Paul was given a doxology to the conclusion of the matter. Because Paul says after everything, and you read chapter 3 in your leisure time when you get home, but he, he says now to him. And whenever you see now, now means this is the conclusion of everything we've discussed. And I've come to tell you, you've got to get to a place in your life where you start saying now to the things you're facing. you got to start saying now to the things you are hoping for. Why? Because it is necessary that we learn to give a benediction to the things that are holding us back. See, 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 a doxology is a benediction. That means this is the conclusion of the matter. This means I'm not going any further. This means now I'm putting this issue to rest. And I'm putting it to rest by telling you I'm giving everything to the one who has the power. What are you saying, preacher? I want you to know that if your expectations are going to be future forward, if you're going to live with future forward expectation, you've got to make sure that you put the power where it belongs. And see, understand when Paul prayed this, when Paul gave this doxology, this was something that was not just an affirmation of God's power, but it was also praise for God's power. God help me. And see, a lot of us will acknowledge that God has power, but we don't give God praise for his power. And Paul is saying, not only am I acknowledging that he has power, but then I'm giving him praise. Why? Because the same power I acknowledge that he has, he has it working in me. What are you saying, preacher? I want you to know that in you, you have what is necessary for you to make it. But in order for you to make it, you've got to learn to say now unto him. Now to him who by the power at work in us is able to accomplish. Uh, Mike, if something is able to be accomplished, that means that it's going to be not only done, but it's going to be complete. See, a lot of people want God to do stuff, but some folk don't want God to complete stuff. Because if God completes some things, there's some things you can't go back to. When God completes some things, there's some stuff you got to stop saying. When God completes some things, there's some places you can't go. There's some drinks you can't drink. There's some smoke. Okay, I ain't going to get all up in your business. But when God completes some things, then he takes you from where you are and he places you where he wants you to be. And this says, as you go through the process, Process, I need your imagination to exceed what you got in your hand. He, 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 he says that he's able to accomplish abundantly. He ain't going to just do it, but he's going to overdo it. Okay, I, I got the wrong church this morning. Uh, uh, he's not going to just do what you think. But he says he's going to do it in an abundance. God help me. In other words, when God bring you out, he's just not going to bring you out up to a week. No, he's going to bring you out and he's going to make your year prosperous. Okay, okay. Watch what he says. Watch what he says. He says, he says he's able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. 
Now, now, can, can, can I help you, Minister Joy? See, we ask for a lot of stuff that we never imagined that we'll get. Okay, okay, okay. Here, here it is. 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 You, 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 you ask God for the promotion, but you didn't really imagine that they was gonna give it to you. Mm -hmm. Or, or here, here it is. Can, can I give it to you like this? You imagine the promotion, but you never asked for it because you didn't think you was well enough or good enough to get it. I'm, I'm trying to help you. And what Paul is saying, Paul is here telling us that as you are moving through your life in 2021, you've got to make sure that everything that was holding you back, everything that you were thinking, that, that, that had you feeling as if you were less than, that made you think in the place of anxiety that had you operating in depression he says now unto him I'm going to the one that has the ability to supersede where you are and to make where you are null and void and he says he he has this power to work in us and I want you to know that with this power working in us this prayer was a prayer that has to be prayed by the believer. This is a season, beloved, where we have to make prayer once again our main focus. We have to make prayer once again a priority. Prayer can no longer be an option in the life of the believer. Too long prayer has been optional, but shouting has been priority. We major in getting folk to do a good jig and play on emotionalism, but when was the last time you pushed them to fall down on their knees and pray to the Lord of the harvest to send workers and then tell him if I've got to be one of the ones I'm praying for, I'm ready to be it. Watch. He, he got to understand that this, 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 this prayer, this doxology was him praising God because he was saying he is able to do more than what I can imagine. What are you really looking for? What are you believing God for? What are you praying for? And then let me ask you, as you pray, as you believe, as you think, as you look, as you work, as you pray, are you in the will of God? Because I've come to learn that many people, the reason we cannot say now unto him, the reason we cannot give the doxology over our frustrations in life, the reason we cannot give the doxology over those things that are holding us up and tripping us up is because we really are not praying in his will. We are praying according to our own lust. We're praying according to what we want and not according to what God has the power to do. Well, preacher, I thought God had all power. He does. But God also will not use his power to violate his will. God help me. And, and I've come to tell you that if you're praying and if you're working, if you're operating and you're looking forward to the future and your expectation of what's coming has nothing to do with the will of God, then God is not obligated to bring it to pass. And I'm so tired of people telling you that if you sow $30, you got a blessing coming. No, that ain't the will of the Father for you. What the Father wants for you is to get your life right. He wants you to quit sinning. He wants you to stop cussing. He wants you to stop harboring illness and ill will in your heart. And when you start doing that, you can start praying now unto him who is able to accomplish. What is he going to accomplish? The very thing that he started in me. And I want you to know, until you get your life right, I don't give a good doggone how much money you give to the preacher. If your life ain't right, he ain't going to move. This is a season to stop robbing the people of God. Start telling them now unto him. Unto him who's what? Able to accomplish abundantly far more. And see, we got to get out of, the, out of thinking that success comes from money. Can, can I help you? Can I tell you what real success is? 
Real success is fulfilling your purpose that God ordained you for. <laughs> God help me. Because real success is something that supersedes you. That's what, watch this, watch this. I said, lest you say I didn't preach my text. Lest you say I didn't preach my text. Uh, uh, what God is going to do in this season, that is something that human intervention cannot control. What God wants to release to his people. I've come to serve you an urgent message to let you know it's time to stop playing games. If he's going to release it, he's releasing it to the mature and faithful believers. He's releasing it to those who understand that it's time to say now to your flesh. It's time to put your flesh under subjection and it's time to put your flesh on notice because what I'm looking for God to do, I'm expecting him to do beyond what I see. My, my expectation of God for the future or my future expectation of God has nothing to do with what I see but has all to do with what I heard. See, too often we get caught up in what we see, but we completely miss what he said. And I'm telling you now in this season, for the rest of this year and the rest of your life, stop going by what you see and start moving off of what he said. Because what he said far exceeds your imagination. What he said far exceeds what you're able to see and what you're able to comprehend. That's why Paul says now unto him, the one who is able to do it. And because he's able, that's when I jump to Philippians chapter 3. That's why I'm pressing on. <laughs> God help me. He, he says, I, I press toward the goal for the prize. What's, what's, what's the prize? The prize is my purpose. I, I know you ain't never heard it like that. But he says, I'm pressing toward, what did he say? The call of God. Huh? And so if it's the call of God, then that means it's the purpose that God has on my life that I have been placed in the earth to fulfill, even though when I feel worthless, I'm still useful. What are, you, what, are you, what are you getting at, preacher? I want us to get in our spirit and I want us to get it in our minds that no longer can we keep doing church the same way. Minister Mike, all this future forward talk, one thing that's going to make it relevant is when we start believing it. I don't care how much the preacher hoop and holler. I don't care how many Sunday school lessons you come to. I don't care how many Bible studies you sit in on. Until you start believing what is written in his word and start walking in it. Until we get to a place where we make purposeful efforts to intentionally walk according to the principles and the word of God. To release the blessings that God said was ours. Then we will never be able to do what he said. But when you make up in your mind come hell or high water no matter what I got to lose no matter who has to leave no matter who I got to bury no matter who I got to cut off I'm going to keep on pressing because there is a purpose on my life there is a call on my life and no my call may not be your call my, my purpose may not be your purpose but one thing is for sure I got a purpose and he says my, my call is in Jesus. Uh, wait, uh, who, who, who calling you? Who, who, whose call are you breaking your neck to answer? He, he says, I'm pressing toward it. In other words, there is opposition that is trying to keep me from answering my call. 
I ain't pressing toward nothing that's an easy way. So in other words, in order for me to press, that means there is something or someone trying to hold me because they understand if I ever answer the call of God on my life, then all hell is going to break loose. Because once I answer the call of God, talk boy, on my life, I ain't going to be the same. You ain't going to be able to put your foot on my neck. You ain't going to be able to hold me down. You ain't going to be able to discourage nobody when they get toward the call and they answer the call they're able to say now unto him God help me what are you saying because I've answered the call I can say now unto him who is able to accomplish abundantly what is he accomplishing he's accomplishing what he called me to do my purpose I told you I ain't gonna be long today I ain't gonna holler today but my purpose is to accomplish what I was born for. Why were you born? Stop limiting God to your imagination. <laughs> watch, watch, watch what he says. Watch what he says. He says because God is able to do more than what you imagine. And so if God is limited to your imagination, but God has the ability to do way more than that, then you are intentionally limiting God. Future forward expectations is breaking the box of your imagination. And start saying, I ain't got no imagination. I just got the voice of the Lord in my ear. <laughs> and, 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 and what I'm thinking and what I'm expecting, what I'm pressing toward is the very thing that God said. And if I accomplish what God said, that ain't the end because every time God opens one door, he opens another door at the same time. See, see, God is not limited in his ability to push you. He's not limited in his ability to bring you future forward. But we limit God because oftentimes we don't want to go future forward. Because to go future forward means death to my past. It means I have to pronounce death and I have to perform a doxology over certain areas of my life that have been keeping me from reaching the goal, going toward the goal. And can I be honest with you today? I'm so glad you tuned in. Let me just ask you this. Is it really other people that's keeping you from pressing or is it you? Are you keeping yourself from pressing toward the goal of the prize of the high calling? Why you want the heavenly call anyway? Because you cannot want the heavenly call for a self-serving purpose. You cannot want the heavenly call just so that your name can be called. You cannot want the heavenly call just so that your name is in lights. You cannot want the heavenly call just so people will give you the respect you think you deserve. You cannot want the heavenly call just so you can get a good honorarium. You cannot want the heavenly call so everybody's talking about you and you got seriously enough, you got you got craziness in your mind to think ain't nobody ever going to say nothing bad about you, honey. The folk that are being used by God are talked about the most. And until you become comfortable with being talked about, until you become comfortable with being laughed at, until you become comfortable with being rejected, until you become comfortable sitting at the family table and realizing even at the family table, although we share the same blood and the same last name, I still don't belong here. Until you get comfortable with those types of things, until you get comfortable walking in rooms and then they get quiet, until you get comfortable walking past folk they give you the side eye because you ain't doing what they doing you ain't saying it like they saying it until you get comfortable you ain't ready for the call see a lot of us want the call because our imagination of what the call is has been distorted because too long in church we who oh Jesus I didn't mean to go here but I'm out here now too long in church We've given people mixed messages. Well, well. Am I free today? Uh, can, can I just tell the truth? Uh, too, too long in church, we've given people mixed messages. We've told them you can live like a hellion and still be blessed. 
we, 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 we've made them think you can buy your way out of sin and God is going to be okay with that. Can, 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 can I help you? Can I, can I help you? Until the issue that you have that creates the blockage between you and God has been dealt with, God is not obligated to help you press toward the call. Let me, let me help you. Although in Philippians he's pressing, most people don't press until they're pushed. So, 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 so in other words, Chris, he's pressing toward the call because he's pushed toward the call. God, God, God help me. And, and, and here it is, you, you done had one bad day. You, you done had a bad week and, and, and you done had a bad month. Oh, may, maybe your year was all messed up and now you talking about some you ain't going. What, 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 what you mean you ain't going? Why you going to give up now? Because I ain't got nobody. I ain't got nobody on my side but Paul just told us that the power that God has is at work in us. And while the power that God has is at work in us, that same power is pushing us. And as that power pushes us, then we press. So can I tell you the truth? If you quit pressing, that means you really ain't got no power. God, God, God help me. That, that means the power ain't really working in you because if the power was in you, then you would realize it ain't you that's doing it in the first place, but it is God because it is God's power that is in you and his power is being called back to where he is. And while it's being called back to where he is, while it is in me, I'm pressing toward going and the call and the power is pushing me because it's pushing me to to my purpose. Our responsibility is to reach the purpose God has despite the trials on your journey. Your journey is filled with trial. I remember the poem Life Ain't No Crystal Stair said it had boards torn up and, and, and nails and all this type of chaos and confusion that was happening. But never did the poet say that they were not in life. It just said life wasn't what they imagined. Can, 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 I, can I give you this? I only got two more minutes and I'm through, I promise. Your purpose may not be what you imagine. And the process to get there show ain't what you imagine. But one thing Paul did tell us is that when we learn to pray and conclude the matter with now unto him and give everything over to the one that has control in the first place, then we understand that it ain't never been about us. <laughs> God help me, I got to go. I gotta, I gotta let you go, I gotta let you go. In the year of expectation, you can press once you give the benediction over the rest of your life. You have to get to the place where you start concluding some things and causing some things to come to an end. The only reason you still struggling with what you're struggling with is you have not given the benediction. You keep entertaining, but you ain't gave the benediction. I've, I've gotten to the place now that I've decided I'm going to give the benediction over some areas. I ain't going to keep talking about it. I ain't going to keep complaining about it. I'm just giving the benediction. Because if I'm going to have future forward expectation, then I've got to give benediction to my current state. Because as long as I stay in my current state, I cannot get to my future purpose. 
I cannot reach my future destiny. I cannot accomplish what God has already spoke in the heavens for me to accomplish. You do know that he did say before I formed thee, I knew thee. And when I knew thee, I had already ordained thee. And so when you came out, you was already ordained. But people just had to catch up to what I had already done in the future. And now I'm getting ready to operate in what God has already done in the future. Future. Help me God while I talk in here. My preaching is for the future. My singing is for the future. My giving is for the future. My attitude is for the future. Is there anybody in the room? Is there anybody on live that understand where you are now is just setting you up for the future and you've got to start working for the future. You've got to remember he ordained you before you came out of your mother's womb but now that you are here you've got to go through the process to get to what he already saw happening in the heavens. He says, I already saw it. I'm just trying to bring you up to speed. Understand the process that you are going through, although it is tedious. It cannot stop what God has already ordained for your life. At some point as believers... Let's get it together. Let's get it together. What are we fussing for? Why we can't get along? What you gritting on somebody else for? Because God gave them this gift and gave you that gift. All gifts are necessary for the working of the body. And whenever you think that your gift supersedes the needs of the body, then you out of pocket. It's time out for us pacifying wrongdoing. Time out. Now, I ain't talking about, oh, it's just holiness of hell, but it is holiness of hell. I want you to be rich. I want you to have the house and the car. I want you to have the things in this life to enjoy, to show how good God is because you're his child. God never said that you had to suffer always. But I want you to know everybody ain't going to be no millionaire either. That ain't what he promised. He promised that you'll have supply. He promised you wouldn't have lack. He didn't promise you'd be a millionaire. Because if you can't manage $100, he ain't going to give you a million. If you stingy with 20, he ain't going to give you a million. If, 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 if you can't sow into who he called you to sow into with the five you got, how he going to trust you with five million? What are you saying? Our imagination limits God because we only want God to do in our imagination things that's going to benefit us. And Paul is saying, no, God is so much more than that. God is so much more than the God that just benefits you. He's so much God that he's going to benefit others through you. <sighs> Jesus. That he's going to benefit others despite you. Despite your unwillingness to go. This is a season where this church, this people, we as the body of Christ in 2021 we can actually start turning the page and set the church back on right trajectory to being an institution that gets back to its original purpose and that's glorifying God and bringing those on the outside to a right relationship with him so they can experience the same benefits we keep shouting over but taking for granted. What is your expectation for the future? What are you looking for God to do? Can I tell you, you might need to scratch that because it's too small. Whatever your expectation is, it's too small. Get it out your mind. It ain't going to work. It's too small. 
I know I, I, I'm, I'm expecting the house. I, I, I'm expecting to get the house that I've been praying for. That's too small. Why settle for a house when you can have the mortgage company? Too small. Future forward expectation is taking the limit off of God and realizing that I can operate in his power because his power is already in me. Can I help you last thing and I'm through? You know why people don't like to operate in God's power? I tell you because you don't know. Is because they can't do what they want with it because it ain't theirs. Remember, he said in Jeremiah, before I formed thee, I knew you. I ordained you. Paul says, I've gone through life. Then I'm given a doxology and I'm saying, now unto him who was able to do and accomplish above everything that I can imagine or ask for because the power that's in me. And then he turns around and says, because of that power that's in me, I'm pressing because that power is pushing me. If I'm being pushed to press, that means I had reservation about pressing. That means I really didn't want to do it because I saw the opposition. But because there's power in me that's pulling me and it's pushing me at the same time, I ain't got no choice but to press. And the reason I'm pressing ain't because I think it's a good idea. It's because the power in me is calling to something that's beyond me. God's power is in you, but it ain't for you. He's calling you to press. He's calling you to go beyond your imagination. He's calling you to take the limits off. See, we only take the limits off God when we want a car, house, we want a mate. We, that's when we take the limits off of God. God, break me out the box. But we don't ever ask God to break us out the box from our sin. We don't ask God to break us out the box from our selfishness. We don't ask God to break us out the box from our doubt. We don't ask God to break us out the box from our fears. No, God wants to break you out the box of you. The only reason God is in the box because you in the box. Can I say this, Chris? God's not limited. You are. It's not God that's the issue. It's you. Because he never told us that this road of salvation was going to be easy. He didn't promise that. He just promised that he'd always be with you. So even though you keep putting yourself in the box, God said, because I promised I'd be with you, I got to get in the box with you. Although this box really can't contain who I am. I've got to force myself to be less than who I am just to make you comfortable. God is saying, when you break the box of your imagination, then I can show you who I really am. We have limited God to just the things that we can see and put our hands on. What happened to the same faith that the old saints used to have? Well, they used to sing them songs and say, for God I live and for God I die. That I'm just a soldier in the army of the Lord. And we, we, we don't sing them kind of songs anymore because those songs require work. Those songs really require faith because to be a soldier 
uh, no soldier is always like. No, 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 no soldier goes through battle with without getting cut sometimes and without getting bruised sometimes. We want to sing those wonderful flowery songs. Lord, I'm chasing after you, but you got to realize to chase after him, you've got to leave the position that you're in. Let's stop being a body of cliches and let's be a body of people who actually live out the stuff we say. This is a time where the church has to really be the church. We got a lot of stuff to contend with. What do people see when they see you? Do they see that the church is going to make it? Will the church make it if it's in your hands? Can the church really have expectation or future forward expectation in your hands? Or are you still limited because you're holding on to what was when God ain't even there no more? I, I pray this series has blessed you. One of the things I've got, to, I, I've got to impress upon you is this. Let's stop being hypocrites. Being a Christian doesn't mean you're going to always be perfect. doesn't mean you're going to always get it right. There are several opposing views to Christianity. Matter of fact, there are Christians who have opposing views with people who claim to be Christian. Because we don't all operate and execute according to the principles of Christ. Because if we did, we wouldn't have all this fighting. But it's time to raise up. It's time to be different. It's time to set the trajectory for future forward expectation. What is God doing next? I don't know, but I'm here for it. How is God going to do it? I don't know, but I'm here for it. Because the scripture has already told me that my thoughts ain't his. And my ways ain't his. And so because I'm not on his level of thinking, then I got to start praying for the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge so that God can give me revelation to help get me where I need to be. But the one thing I'm not going to do is put God in a box. He's bigger than my imagination. He's bigger than your imagination. So I want you to know, beloved friend, brother, sister, Man, woman, take the limits off. Stop thinking small. I know you got a great imagination, but Paul already told us that don't even compare to what God is able to do.